I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Welcome to the Watchman channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Israel says an Iranian suicide drone armed with explosives hit the Mercer Street ship, killing its Romanian captain and a British security officer. An Israeli-owned company manages the vessel, and on Sunday, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett warned Iran. So I stayed here absolutely. Iran is the one that carried out the attack against the ship. Iran's aggressive behavior is dangerous, not only for Israel, but also harms international interests, the freedom of navigation and the international trade. The intelligence evidence for this exists, and we expect the international system to make it clear to the Iranian regime that they have made a grave mistake. In any case, we know how to convey the message to Iran in our own way. In a statement, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken blamed Iran for the attack and stated, we are working with their partners to consider our next steps and consulting with governments inside the region and beyond on an appropriate response, which will be forthcoming. While Iran denied responsibility, the attack is the latest in a series of strikes at sea between Iran and Israel. In the meantime, Ibrahim Raisi will be sworn in as Iran's new president on Thursday called the hangman of Tehran for his involvement in the death of thousands of Iranians, it remains to be seen what impact he will have on negotiations over the renewal of the Iranian nuclear deal. Talks have been suspended for the past six weeks. U.S. Secretary Blinken says the delay can't go on forever. The ball remains in, uh, in Iran's court, uh, and we, uh, we will see if uh, they are prepared to make the decisions necessary to come back into compliance. We are committed to uh, diplomacy, but this process cannot go on indefinitely. Well, Chris, Iran is increasingly using these drones. Uh, what role do these weapons play in this so-called war between wars? Well, Pat, they're a big part of their conventional arsenal. Uh, they have a range sometimes of up to 1,600 kilometers or about 1,000 miles. We were in, uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia in September of 2019. They call that the Pearl Harbor of drone warfare, where they had multiple drones attacking Saudi Arabia's largest oil refinery. We were there, Pat, to see that. And uh, it's really just one part of a shadow covert war between Iran and Israel right now. As you said, it's called the war between wars. Earlier today, we had a briefing with General Amos uh, Yadlin. He's a retired general. And he said it's really all dimensions. It's on all fronts. It's maritime. It's cyber, terror attacks, Iranian proxies in Iraq and Syria. It's all over the Middle East, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon. And so both sides are attacking each other. But so far, both sides don't want a full-scale war. Uh, but one day, Pat, you know, it could break out into a war. And uh, we say this a lot, but it's one reason why we believe it's very important to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And many believe the election of Raisi could mark the beginning of an even more dangerous period between Israel and the Islamic Republic of Iran. Jesus said, one of the many signs we are living in the last days just prior to his return is that you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophet Ezekiel prophesied about these wars, and I believe they are on the verge of finding fulfillment. I believe we are now past the stage setting for the War of Gog and Magog. We are now in the second act. Russia along with Iran, Turkey, and many others will soon come against Israel to take a spoil. 
which many watchers of end times Bible prophecy believe to be gas and oil. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that many people believe will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel. Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. As we can see by recent events, stage setting for the War of Gog and Magog is taking place as Russia, Iran, and Turkey are forming a dangerous alliance at the doorstep of Israel's border. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, Fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin the infamous Gog of Magog that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators 
who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. It is most likely that a prophecy by Isaiah concerning the destruction of Damascus will occur before or during the war of Gog and Magog. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 The burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9 in that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. Bible prophecy is on full throttle, yet many in the Christian church are asleep to the fact that Jesus Christ is returning very soon. Jesus was very emphatic about watching and praying for his return in Luke 21:36. Luke 21:36. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Tell us about this new president. Why is he considered so dangerous? Well, Pat, he's called the butcher or the hangman of Tehran for a reason. He's responsible for maybe 3,000, some believe as many as 30,000 deaths in 1988 of political prisoners. He also reflects the supreme leader's uh, stance to take a more hardline approach against the West. A big test, Pat, is coming up to see how he's going to deal with the nuclear talks. He's skeptical of those talks, and he'll have a new negotiating team, and it remains to be seen, uh, you know, how that's going to work out. But, Pat, he's also a firm believer in the return of the Mahdi, uh, the Shiite Messiah, and he says the Mahdi is the savior of mankind, and he's looking for his appearance. Over the centuries, people have guessed wrong again and again that the Antichrist, that ultra-violent world dictator, was soon to appear. But Dr. Michael Youssef of the Global Outreach Ministry leading the way believes only now are conditions set for the coming of that evil one. What Dr. Youssef's found and talks about in End Times and the Secret of the Mahdi is how what's going on in our world right now is leading straight towards those events prophesied in the book of Revelation. I came with the conclusion that we are coming into that period of time uh, like we have never seen before in history. Hailing from Cairo himself, Youssef deeply loves the Islamic people, but believes Islam is hurtling us toward the dark days of the Antichrist, as the promo for his book shows. He will lull the world into believing in him, even worshiping him as the Messiah. But he will end up abusing humanity like they have never been tormented before. This biblical scholar has been researching Islam's beliefs in their end times Messiah, alongside the Bible's revelations about the Antichrist. His conclusion? Christians know him as the Antichrist. Sunni Muslims know him as the Muslim Christ. Shiite Muslims know him as the Mahdi. Youssef quotes Muslim scholars on what Islam preaches about their Messiah. Their Messiah comes. He's going to cover the whole world. He's going to rule the world. And he's going to declare himself to be a Muslim. And he's going to turn on the Christians and the Jews. And we know, of course, the Bible said the Antichrist is going to come and he's going to turn on the Christians and the Jews. Other parallels he sees between the Mahdi and the Antichrist? He will call himself the man of peace. That he's going to come at a time of chaos and confusion and people longing for somebody to guide them and lead them and, and bring them peace because they will be worn out. Both the Bible and Islam talk about his seven-year global reign from Jerusalem and that this figure of peace will turn hyper-violent. He's going to begin to persecute people. He's going to demand them their worship. Same thing on the other side, that he is going to kill everybody who does not worship him. Youssef says some Shiites have actually been trying to bring about the prophesied time of the Mahdi to make it happen themselves. He will appear when the world is in chaos and he will bring peace. So if Pastor Youssef's belief is correct that this Muslim Messiah will be the Antichrist, it's the first time in history believers of a major religion have been actively working to bring him into the world and welcome him. But Yusuf insists, do not fear. The Lord said, when you see these signs, lift up your head because you, the day of your redemption is drawing nigh. And so far from being afraid and worried and concerned, we should be rejoicing. Many believe the Bible warns that the world will be deceived by Antichrist's global false religion, at first tolerating and bringing all religions together. In his book, Yusuf talks about the already popular coexist bumper sticker with the Islamic crescent forming its C, the Jewish star of David for X, the witchcraft or pagan pentacle dotting the I, 
the Taoist yin and yang symbol for S, and the cross of Christ as the T. Already, there is something that is rampant among mainland denominations called the uh, Islam. And uh, there are churches in Canada and the United States where they read from the Quran as well as the Bible. The Antichrist will control a one world religion as we read in Revelation 17, 1 through 5 and verse 15. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot, which is the one world false religion, who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, which is the one world false religion, and of the abominations of the earth. Verse 15, Then he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, which is the world. There are convincing arguments for the one world religion being Catholicism, Islam, and all other religions combining, proclaiming we all worship the same God. This last day's one world religion, the great harlot of Babylon, will have great worldwide influence over peoples and nations. Eventually, the harlot, the one world false religion, will lose favor with the Antichrist, who will want to receive the world's worship for himself, as we read in Revelation 17, verses 16 and 17. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, the one world false religion, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. The Antichrist will not share the adoration of the world with the prophets and priests of the false religion, no matter how obsequious or fawning they may be. Once the Antichrist gains the world's amazed attention by his miraculous return from the dead, he will turn on the false religious system and destroy it, establishing himself as God, as we read in Revelation 13, 11 and 12. Then I saw another beast, who is the false prophet, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he, the false prophet, exercises all the authority of the first beast, who is the Antichrist, in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, who is the Antichrist, whose deadly wound was healed. The Bible specifies 42 months, or three and a half years, that the Antichrist will have worldwide influence, as we read in Revelation 13, 5 through 8. And he, the Antichrist, was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Notice it was given to him and granted to him to do these things. God is sovereign, and the Antichrist, who at this time is indwelt by Satan, has no power except what is given or granted by God. The false prophet and the Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire, as we read in Revelation 19, 19 and 20. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Satan will join the false prophet and the Antichrist, as we read in Revelation 20.10. The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. We can plainly see the stage is being set for the Antichrist to take his place on the world stage. What will be the trigger that enables the Antichrist to become the leader of the one world government forcing all people to take his mark and to be worshipped as God? But he adds that there's a way to be immune from false religion. If a person is a genuine believer in Jesus Christ, he will not be deceived. That the Holy Spirit is going to give us discernment, that we will be able to tell the difference. And though they may be cursed as intolerant, Yusuf preaches it's time for Christians to insist Christ is the only way, not just one more option. We don't hate anyone. We love everyone. But there's only one name under heaven by which men and women can be saved. And his name is Jesus. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. There is nothing more essential to the world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul declares what the gospel is and how important it is to embrace it and share it with others. He reminds the Corinthians of the gospel he preached among them, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that Christ is coming back for his church someday in the rapture according to the scriptures, as we read in 1 Corinthians 15:51 through 55. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is your sting O Hades where is your victory? Jesus promised his followers he was going to go and prepare a place for them in his Father's house, where there are many mansions, as we read in John 14, 1-3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the essence of the gospel, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross for sinners, his resurrection to everlasting life, and his coming back someday is central to our Christian faith. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning.